So this is going to be a little bit of an experiment. I hope it turns out well. I want to give you guys another way to look at an example of decomposition into voice cod normal form. So hopefully this will augment the previous example I already did with the slides, but I think sometimes it's a good idea uh, just to kind of get away from all that for a moment and grab a pen and a piece of paper and just kind of write it out. Um, it sometimes helps uh, make it a little bit more um, understandable. Let's make a totally new example too. Uh, before I get too deep and I forget to mention it, I also want to kind of throw out there that before the midterm, make a note for yourself to come back to this video and, and the other example too. Um, you know, there will be a question on the midterm on decomposition that's kind of long form, and I'm going to give you a relation, and it's, you know, going to be something probably similar in nature to this one, um, and I'm going to ask you to decompose it. Also remember that that's going to require you to know how to uh, figure out a closure, so definitely be familiar with that. And I'm going to talk through some of that here, but remember that the closure information is in the prior week's videos. All right, so let's start with relation zero, and we're going to put in this relation zero attributes A, B, C, whoops, no, not B twice, I apologize, D, E, F, G, H, and I. Now, I'm doing this just calling the attributes by letter names for succinctness, so this doesn't get too crazy uh, with me writing it out. But just for fun and to to kind of give it a little bit of, um, you know, more um, realness for us humans to understand what's going on, let's, let's give these attributes real names. I'm not going to keep them through the whole thing. We'll, we'll, we can come back to them at the end. Um, but you can always, you know, write them out as the real names if you want to. Let's let's call CWA. Let's call A C W A D. Um, you guys should be familiar with that one. Of course, that's our college wide ID here at Marist. Um, let's make B um, first name. Uh, C will be last name. D. Let's make it age. I think that's a a good one for that. It's just something that I want functionally dependent on the person. Um, e, let, let's just make an email for our little example here. You're only going to ever have one email. That's okay. Um, and then I'm going to have F be address code uh, before we run out of space. G is going to be the actual address, like the street address. Uh, H will be city. And I will be zip. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit interesting with the functional dependencies here because I want to break this up a couple of ways. But but let's define some functional dependencies for these. So without going uh, too deep into this, and you can definitely review the functional dependency stuff, I'm going to kind of throw these out there and we'll talk a little bit about why I did it the way I did. So we're going to say that B, C, D, uh, E, and F are all functionally dependent on A. Uh, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Your first name and last name are obviously going to be tied to your CWE. Uh, so is your age, um, because that doesn't change, unfortunately, except it goes up. Um, but I don't get to, to go back to being 20 or something like that. Um, your email, in our case, is tied directly to it, as is, you know, our address. We're saying that um, in this case, uh, we're going to tie in the address uh, one address directly to the person. So we're, we're making the conscious decision at this moment to make it functionally dependent. I do realize that, you know, this could be treated differently in the real world, um, but I'm just trying to get through decomposition here, um, and we're not really dealing with like many-to-many -many relationships and stuff like that. So for now, just go with this. This is our functional dependencies. Um, we're also going to say that G and I, and I'll explain this in a moment, um, are functionally dependent on F, and that I is, or H rather, is functionally dependent on I. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is, is just because I really want to make this into three relations, and you'll see that in a moment. So what I'm doing is I'm saying that um, a city is functionally dependent on a zip code, right? And that, that kind of makes sense. You can have more than one zip code in a city, 
Um, but for every zip code, I'm going to have one in only one city, right? So, you know, Poughkeepsie is like 12601 and 12603, etc. cetera. Um, you know, so each key is still going to be okay, and I'm going to have some cities that are the same. That's okay, too. Um, but it is correct to say that the city is functionally dependent on the zip. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm purposely saying here that the address and the zip are functionally dependent on the address code. That's going to be quite literally just an ID number for the address. This is going to reference here. So for those of you who have done some database work in the past, I can kind of tie this in to things that you've used, I'm sure, and at this point seem pretty intuitive. When you break tables apart, um, they have primary keys and foreign keys. And what we're going to end up here is you can almost see them mapping out with these functional dependencies is the primary keys and the foreign keys. So um, let, let's start the process and then you'll, you'll kind of see that come to fruition. Now, the first thing we have to do before we can start is we have to decide um, what the closure is for our relation, right? So I'm not going to go through the whole thing and have like the set of acts and, and add to it. I'm going to talk through it here and I'm going to talk through my logic. So um, if you're not super sure on this part, of course, go back and review that. But that said, um, remember we said when you're deciding on a closure, the first thing you want to do is normally you want to go with a single attribute first, right? You want to start with single attributes and work your way up. Um, it's also a good idea to start with an attribute that just makes sense, right? We gave these things actual names to look at, so let's look at it and see what makes sense. Um, CWE, CWID looks like a good candidate, and I can eyeball it, and I can tell you right away this is going to work, um, but let's, let's actually do it. Let's play it out. Let's assume that I'm correct, uh, because I am, and that's just the way of the world. Um, so we're going to say the closure of A, and let's put everything in it. So remember, we're going to look at our functional dependencies. Um, we, we put A in there because we said that anything that we're testing for automatically goes in. And then we look at our functional dependencies, and we have A on the left side over here, so that's going to bring all these in. So I get B, C, D, E, and F. And then F is now in the group, so F is going to give me G and I, which is awesome. And now I is in the group, so I is going to give me H. And that, through the transitive dependencies, gives me everything nicely wrapped up in a little bit of a different order, but everything wrapped up here. Um, and I have a closure on attribute A, which means that attribute A is my key, right? Uh, technically, that is my, my super key. It's also, I'm sure, a minimal key because it's, it's small. Um, and everything is good. Life is good. Um, this is, of course, different from, remember, our Star Wars relation where we had the star name in there. Because remember, there was no functional dependency that offered a transitive dependency that brought star name into the fold, right? So we had to add star name to the key to get a closure. And this isn't the case here. The way the functional dependencies are mapped out, we can pull in all of our attributes um, and A is all we need to create a closure, which is great. But as we'll see in a moment, this relation is not in Boyce-Codd normal form. So let's test that and see why. So we have our attribute, and remember the rule is now to test for Boyce-Codd, um, or closure, sorry, of, of the attribute A. Uh, the rule is to test for Boyce-Codd normal form. We're going to iterate through our functional dependencies, and remember these technically should be um, split up using the splitting rule, um, but I'm just going to eyeball that. But remember, hypothetically, you're going through these one at a time. B is dependent on A, C is dependent on A, etc. So you would look and you'd say, all right, well, B is dependent on A, A is here, so B is okay. C is dependent on A, A is here, C is okay, right? So we know that all of these are okay. Now we're going to come down here. Now the rule is that whatever's on the left-hand side of the functional dependency um, must contain a key. And here is the key, and it does not contain the key, right? So this functional dependency is in violation of this relation being in Boyce Cod normal form. So now the rule is that we create a new relation. So I'm going to come down here and create relation one. And we use the attribute on the left-hand side of the offending uh, functional dependency as effectively the key for the new relation. 
um, we're going to make it the closure, and it's also the first thing that goes in the relation. So we're going to put the F there, and because we know that it is our closure for the new relation, we can look at our functional dependencies, and we can see that the only ones that are going to work for us is going to be the F uh, to equal GI, which brings this across. But now that we have I, it also allows us to bring over H. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can close that because none of this is going to work. We don't have an A in here, so we can't bring across any of the rest. Now, remember, the next thing you're supposed to do, I'm going to relabel this as relation 2, is recreate um, kind of the original relation. It's really what's left. But remember, most importantly, it's what's left. And also, that attribute, again, that was on the left-hand side of the functional dependency that... Uh, was in violation, right? So it's going to be what's left plus F. So we're going to have A, B, C, D, E, and F are going to be in here. And we're not done yet. Um, this one of these still needs to be broken down a little bit more. But what I want to show you is this. So here we know that F, remember, is our closure here, right? So I'm just going to put it over here so we can see it. I kind of wish I'd put it over there, but it doesn't matter. Um, that's our key. Over here we have F, right? So if you're thinking to yourself, hey, is this F a foreign key? Hey, yes, that was a good observation on your part, right? So this is how um, we can actually use a formula to know that when you're creating tables, we're doing it in the right fashion and we're actually ending up with tables that are in fact in the boys cod normal form. All right, so remember now we have to iterate and this time we're supposed to be checking these to see if they're in boys cod normal form and if not continuing the breakdown process. Remember we said that the decomposition process is always a process from one relation to two and we started with one and now we have two. Are we done? Are these in boys cod normal form? Well, this one is and actually before I do this I also should have broken up um, the set of functional dependencies. So let me do that now as well. So we're going to have set one and set two. The way you do this is each fun uh, functional dependency that came across as part of constructing this then gets brought into that relation. So here we have um, G is dependent, G and I are dependent on F, and we also used uh, H being dependent on I. So that will come over here, and then the original one will stay here, B, C, D, uh, E, and F being dependent on A. And now that we have those, sorry, we should have done that before, we can evaluate this and see if we're in boys cut normal form. So again, the way we do that, I'm going to start with relation two here because I know that it is, is that we look at the key, which is still A, that hasn't changed, and we can see that all of these um, are fine with that, right? A is on the left-hand side of every single one. This relation is good. We are in boys cod normal form there. However, here we are not. Our key is F, and here we're fine. F and G and I are, are perfectly good, but the left side of this one is not, right? This is in violation. Um, there is no F there. So we have to break out yet another relation. So we're gonna create relation three. And relation three, remember, we take the left side of the offending functional dependency, and that becomes our key. So unlike before, let's just go ahead and make it a closure now. And then we're going to create the relational set. So we're going to have I, and I does not equal I. I brought that across wrong, or it was just sloppy. It's H. So this is I and H. And now that's it, right? Because... We can't come across to here. There's nothing else to do, and these are over here. So, yep, we're done. Um, so this now is okay, and we can. We might as well just bring our our set down. The only functional dependency we need is H dependent on I, and now we just need to clean up, right? We need to recreate relation one here. Um, I'm going to do that here. I'm just going to keep the name the same. If you wanted to name it relation four, that's absolutely fine with me. Um, I'm just going to do one, two, and three because um, that's how I want to end up. 
um, but it, you know I won't take a point off or something depending on that, what number you give it. Uh, you can reuse one or you can go up to four. I don't really care. Um, excuse me. So what I'm going to do now is take what's left, right? Um, F is still the key. There's no reason to change that. So let's go ahead and make that the closure. And what's left is F, because remember you keep what's left um, and the thing that offended us. So I is going to remain here as well. So we're going to have F, we're going to have G, we're going to have I, uh, but no H, right? H went over there. Remember, I stays because it's the offending left side of the functional dependency, and it's going to become our foreign key. So now let's go ahead. We're, we're actually done at this point. Um, these are all in Boyce Cod normal form. Um, if I bring down my functional dependencies here, you can see that this is perfectly fine. Um, F is the uh, key, and F is the left side of the functional dependency. So all three of these are you now in Boyce Cod normal form. Now let's just put the names on it so we can kind of get some completion here. So that was CWID, first name, last name, age, email, um, address code, right? And then down here we have I, um, which is zip. Here we have H, which is city. And down here we have F, which is address code. And G, which is address, which was the actual street address. I should have named it like street address, but that's okay. Um, and I, which is zip. So key, key, and key, right? Foreign key, zip to here, and city. Oops, sorry zip to here, and then address code here to here, right? So you can see how these tables relate. And I purposely broke them up so they both didn't point to the, the student here. Notice there's only one foreign key here, address code. Address code points to the address relationship. Um, and then there's a foreign key here that points to the zip, right? So I purposely kind of broke them up in a in a weird way because I wanted to, to kind of show it in a slightly abnormal fashion, but nothing too crazy. Um, so you could see that breakout, right? So if we were to like kind of draw these tables out, right? So let's call, um, let's call R2 here. We'll call this uh, student, right? Because that's the one with CWID and all those kinds of things. And then we have relation one here, relation one, is actually the addresses, right? So that's the addresses. Um, student has the address code here as one of its attributes, which is the foreign key that points to the primary here. And then we also have our last one. Sorry, I didn't realize I was off. Our last one is the actual uh, city zip, whatever we want to call it. We'll just call it uh, zip lookup right, because it's looking up by zips. And this table and its attributes has um, the zip foreign key, and that points to the primary key here, right? So if you were to kind of diagram that out, that's how it would end up. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful. And again, please remember to come back and review this, uh, especially before the midterm.